Russian President Vladimir Putin has interacted with Prime Minister Narendra Modi over a private engagement at his official residence at Novo Ogari Ovo, during which he praised the Indian leader for his dedication towards his country's progress and for devoting his life to the people of India. PM Modi engaged in an informal meeting with President Putin at his residence. The two leaders had a tea meeting at the terrace of Kremlin. While engaging in a conversation, President Putin chauffeured PM Modi in an electric car and gave him a tour around his residence. The two leaders mostly interacted by interpreters but had a brief private conversation while strolling through the garden. Joining us at this point uh, to uh, decode this big story is Professor Madhav Nalapath, editorial director of the Sunday Guardian. We also have Surinder Singh Lali, foreign uh, affairs expert joining us live. Major General Gigi Devedi, strategic affairs expert is also with us on the broadcast. Let me uh, make a start with you, Professor Nalapath. Uh, uh, what do you make of this uh, informal uh, interaction, the body language between the two leaders when they met uh, last evening? Well, uh, I'd like to say that uh, uh, they, they just shows how, how much warmth they feel towards each other. Uh, they've been friends for, for a very long time and uh, that, that friendship is very, very clear, which is very, very important today because I do believe that uh, given the political situation in many Western countries, I think a lot of individuals are going to be looking for an end to the Ukraine conflict. Russia has always wanted to have a ceasefire, an end to the conflict on the basis of the boundaries of the lands it already has. And the West is now has created this artificial story that Russia wants to invade the whole of Ukraine, occupy it, then invade the whole of Europe, occupied, which is completely absurd, but which is meant to justify the huge amount of money that NATO has spent on Ukraine in an effort to degrade the Russian military and which have, or, and economy, by the way, with financial sanctions, which have failed. It's clearly failed. And it's obvious to the Western public that it has failed. So less and less people are believing in this fable that's been trotted out by, by, by NATO publicists that Russia wants to occupy the whole of Ukraine. From there, Russia wants to occupy the whole of Europe. Absolute nonsense. And Putin has made that very clear many times. They've also gone to the extent of saying that the reason why Russians are not advancing further than their claim line is that uh, is the, the, the Russians are basically, you know, the Russians are basically uh, 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 very, uh, I mean, unable to do so because of NATO weaponry, which again is not true. It's not because of NATO weapons at all. The Ukrainians are being cut to pieces. It's because the Putin doesn't want more than the existing portions of Ukraine that has been, that have been occupied uh, since 2014, if I may add, most of them. So this, this being the case, seeing the warmth between the two, I do believe Prime Minister Modi it is, is possible for him to basically publicly say, why don't we have a, a ceasefire? Why don't we stop combat operations? And for Putin to reply, yes, I am ready for a ceasefire. I am ready for an end to combat operations with one important condition, that Ukraine should never be a member of NATO. For the reason that the Ukrainian administration is so negative to Russia that once it joins NATO, it will immediately uh, go back to war with Russia and drag the whole of NATO into it, which has been its intention from the very beginning of 2022. So I think it's a very justified uh, uh, rationale for, uh, for saying that Ukraine should not join NATO because given the Ukrainian leadership, it's very likely they will take that uh, membership as an invitation to once again attack Russia and the Russians are then going to invade and they're going to, you know, create havoc. And then there'll be a NATO-Russia war for the first time. So with that caveat, I do believe Putin is ready. And I sincerely hope the two uh, statespersons who are basically the leaders of two, four, the four, two of the four major uh, powers of the world, great powers of the world, India, Russia, US and China, that they will come to an understanding and publicly <laughs> President Putin will say he's ready to stop combat operations provided Ukraine is not allowed 
to join NATO. I think that will be a tremendous achievement for Prime Minister Modi, a tremendous achievement that will benefit the entire world. Absolutely. Uh, let me take that to Surinder Singh Lali as well. Surinder Singh Lali, uh, you know, obviously uh, the bonhomie between the two leaders are uh, very visible uh, yesterday. Uh, and the fact that, you know, uh, uh, President Putin took out this time uh, to actually interact with PM Modi, give him a private tour, personal tour of his residence, uh, spend time with him off uh, camera, uh, off record, uh, you know, really talks a lot about the special relationship between the two nations and also the camaraderie between the two leaders. Yeah, Uday, and uh, just to take your point forward, I think uh, Russia has made absolutely the right noises in terms of according the same treatment to the Indian Prime Minister as they did to the Chinese President, right from the Deputy Prime Minister receiving to the red carpet treatment and then, you know, that casual dinner at the, at the Russian leader's estate. Uh, Uday, it's not tough. It's, I'm sure it's a very tough job in geopolitics today because, you know, it's a very multipolar world and everybody wants to, uh, you know, keep the right alliances. And I think let's give it on this note to the Honorable Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister to actually have stood their ground and not have succumbed to the pressure by the Western economies, and especially the United States, in us inheriting their Cold War problems and fighting battles which they initiated even way before we came into the picture. So I feel as much as uh, you know, India is doing for themselves, and so is the United States, and so is even Russia. Even Russia, for that matter, is you know. A, a, Putin made a visit to Vietnam, Pyongyang, North Korea, India, and you know, I'm sure there is a visit to China too after, I mean, a visit to Iran too after this or vice versa. So I think it's a very complex world, but India has stood their ground and India has come with a sense of clarity that we do not want to be an ally anymore, ally. We just want to be a strategic partner because for us, our geopolitical alliances, our middle class, uh, our energy requirements, and you know our intelligence. So I think uh, it's an extremely important trip right now, especially when our prime minister is in Russia and they're having the NATO summit, the 75th NATO summit in the United States. So I think a lot of this has a lot of very clear messaging, at least, at least from India's point of view to the world, that we're not going to toe the line and inherit your problems or fight fight your battles, which have nothing to do with us. For us, our relationship be be Iran or you know be be Russia. We're clear on what we need to do, and we will work in our best interests. Although the West might and does deploy various tools, you know, through the K elements and through other lobbies and financial institutions to pressurize us to toe the line. But I think even in the Ukraine war then and even now, we're standing our ground and we're letting the world know that for us, our energy requirements, our uh, 1.4 billion people and their requirements are supreme uh, rather than, you know, your, uh, your acquired battle. So I think we're kind of in a war, you know, Cold War 2.0 era, if I may say so. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, we're getting some uh, further breaking updates now coming in, uh, visuals on our screen uh, that we're putting out for you. Modi and Putin have toured the Atom exhibition in Moscow. Uh, Prime Minister Modi of India and President Putin of Russia visited the display in uh, uh, Vadank, which uh, illustrates the developments of atomic energy in Russia. Currently, Russia's uh, Rosatom are continuing to develop India's atomic energy infrastructure, beginning with the Kurankulam NPP in 2013 and also potentially six further blocks on the way. So this is also very crucial. Uh, of course, those talks will delve on uh, energy, uh, Major General Devedi, but, uh, you know, Modi and Putin currently on a tour of the Atom exhibition in Moscow. Very interesting development just coming in. Absolutely right, because uh, India and uh, Russian relations are not only in the limited arena, but they have a very wide spectrum. And energy is one of the important areas, and so also the defense. And yeah, as you rightly brought out, that we already have the Russian reactors in India producing about 2,000 megawatts of power and uh, six more would-win pipelines. That's a, a very important arena. 
and more so connected with the energy you know in last uh, two years we have imported huge amount of oil something like 1.78 uh, billion barrel this day <clears throat> and in 2023 we saved about 25 billion dollars of oil exchange so one this is one aspect but let me uh, take this you know uh, my own uh, perception a little wider see today the world is in state of flux every country is trying to reposition and especially russia because russia stand isolated but putin has made it one thing very clear that russia may be weakened but it's not out and he still want to restore the cold war you know symmetry uh, with with the west and therefore he is realigning himself and his country new axis is coming up with china russia iran turkey and uh, putin does not want to play second his role to china so therefore india is one which can balance it out because uh, there is no love lost between china and russia because they have age old enmity but this is all geopolitics and uh, the point about india you see every country pursues its own interest and uh, india has always uh, valued its sovereignty its own uh, you know kind of neutrality and that's what is uh, being taken forward by prime minister modi because india has always taken a position and uh, we have taken a position that our country interest wherever they are served we will engage and therefore there is no hold back to engage either with west or with russia or uh, with any other country like iran so a point i would like to make is that yes the visit is important there are the optics there is this symbolism there is this substance but at the end of it india uh, russia relations are very important both in the global and regional perspective especially when we are looking at china and uh, we have a serious issue with china and we would also like russia to take a position so that it also played neutral if not uh, in our favor but definitely not against us ode yes indeed uh, also of course uh, you know we are expecting now uh, uh, the formal talks to begin uh, later today uh, between the two uh, nations uh, of course the formal india russia summit of course uh, which which is the main reason why prime minister narendra modi has uh, traveled to moscow uh, those of course will be uh, very structured talks what all will be on the table uh, professor nalapat in your opinion well uh I'd like to say that uh, very definitely energy cooperation will be very high on the table there's no question about that and uh, especially and I think another item on the table will be the rupee ruble uh, agreement now that agreement is a very good agreement uh, the only problem is that because of pressure from china the russians are not really using their rupees to invest more in it in india the fact of the matter is that russian companies can do very well in india as we have seen for example in the field of of, of oil uh, now and of course defense so the reality is that russia has built up significant surpluses of rupees but it can use that to invest in india and make uh, goods for its own consumers at a lower cost than its imports and secondly it will also benefit uh, india in terms of much greater employment so i think one of the important issues will be ensuring that there is greater russian investment in india so that the balance of trade becomes more equal and that the rupee ruble trade is basically you uh, widen so that more and more trade is carried out in each other's currencies after all you know these are two friendly countries iran and russia had a deal and i do believe it's important for india and russia also to have a deal so the only thing standing in the way is china and may I end this by saying with a narendra modi is perfectly aligned with cold war 2.0 which uh, has been brought out by dr lali the reality is the new adversary is china it is no longer the soviet union and it's no longer russia it is china unfortunately the united states especially in the biden administration the many of the, the uk well clearly during rishi sunak's time and possibly even now under starmer the europeans they just don't get it but they don't get the fact that today it's asia that's much more important than europe it's the indo pacific that's much more important than the atlantic and india is firmly aligned 
with, uh, with the security of the Indo-Pacific. And I can assure you that as far as that is concerned, we have signed during Prime Minister Modi's tenure all the four major defense foundation agreements with the United States. We have become a member of the Quad. And I think it's only a matter of time before the Quad becomes a security alliance. Of course, limited to the Indo-Pacific and to the Eurasian continent is not going to be like NATO wandering all over the world and frankly failing everywhere. The only war NATO has fought in Europe was with Serbia and it won that war because Serbia was defenseless and it, Kosovo, of course, was taken away from Serbia. In Asia, every single war that NATO has been involved in has made the countries in which it was involved more chaotic and frankly more anti-Western. So that alliance has been a failure everywhere because its, it's use is over. There has to be a reconfigured alliance. They have, they're refusing to do it. Why? Because bureaucracies hate change. And NATO is a very expensive, well-staffed, uh, very well-paid bureaucracy in which almost the entire uh, NATO forces, they do, all, they do nothing. And they have no prospect of them doing anything. Because uh, Putin does not want a war with NATO or vice versa. But the way they are promoting this Ukraine war, it could result in a situation where you have a widening of the conflict into a NATO country, and then NATO will see for itself what Russia is. So I'd like to say today that the good news is our country is firmly aligned with the Quad partners in ensuring a free, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific. Our relationship with the United States, especially in defense, is very strong. I do not believe there's much of a future for an invigorated India U Russia defense relationship, but there's a huge future for energy, huge future for commodities, huge future for mutual investment. And I, I am very certain that all these are going to be touched upon when the two delegations led by the prime minister and the president, who are clearly very close to each other, meet face to face and in an atmosphere where we can talk frankly as good friends, as only good friends can with each other. And, I may, and as I said, you're quite right. The, the Russians are not very happy about just following China around. They are also a great power together with China. And they would like to ensure their own independent space. One way of showing that would basically be to have a rupee ruble a trade deal and to ensure massive investment of Russia in India. Thank you. Yes. Uh, also, you know, there has though been uh, Surinder Singh Lali, a criticism that has come in from uh, uh, Ukraine. Vladimir Zelensky has slammed the meeting between Modi and Putin. How should that uh, criticism and those views uh, be taken in context of what's happening in the world of today? Yeah, I, I, I didn't, he didn't take the name, but obviously the reference was to the hug and he equated that to, you know, the, the hospital being bombed. But but okay, let's give one thing to both the leaders, uh, which I think the Honorable Prime Minister and Putin have in common, although the entire Western world is trying to corner Putin and Modi ji also back home didn't get the, you know, the, the 272 plus. But let's give it to both of them to be, for, you know, standing their ground and trying to do everything as business as usual. Be it be back home, you know, there is no portfolio difference. The strategy needs to be the same. And the energy, I think, is pretty much the same as it, it would have been charged so far. So that's exactly what Putin is doing too. I mean, he also understands that him getting too close to China or any one lobby might cost him, although he's smart enough to understand how we are gradually buying our defense equipment from Israel, from America, from France, but I think that the right optics were, were, were to be witnessed today. And both the leaders were actually standing their ground and not allowing some of things, some things that could have bothered them, but at least optically don't appear to be bothering them. Okay. Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has arrived in Moscow uh, for this visit. And immediately, of course, uh, after his arrival, uh, uh, the foreign press also, of course, had uh, uh, spoken out uh, on uh, this visit. Uh, foreign press uh, 
headlines can be seen, uh, uh, seen of course, on your screens now. Uh, Al Jazeera wrote about how Putin hosts dear friend Modi on first trip to Russia since Ukraine war. Meanwhile, Reuters reacted with how Modi, uh, Putin hold informal talks at Kremlin leaders' residence. So foreign press also has their views and eyes on this uh, visit very, very closely, Major General Devedi. It's uh, create, creating global ripples, clearly. Matthew Miller came on record. Matthew Miller came on record. The point is made to me. <laughs> Let me just speak, Mr. Lali. Yes, absolutely, because the visit is not only serving the interest of uh, India and Russia, because it has a global perspective. Because today, India and Russia, or India, you know, interacting with any other country, has a global ramification. And so also the visit, because this visit has impact how the West, uh, West sees us, how the, you know, America sees us. Therefore, we need to take care and also through the sensitivity. But I'd like to make two important points uh, Today. First and foremost, every country has its own national interest. And so also Mr. Modi and uh, President Putin, they are serving the interest of their own countries. But within that ambit, you also have to see the global perspective. India has uh, multiple engagement because the threats, the challenges that we are facing cannot be served by one country or one bloc. So therefore, we are engaging with West. We have a member of court. And let me tell you, that we are one of the architects of, uh, you know, redesigning the vision of Indo-Pacific. So therefore, what we need to see is that India today is on the global scene. What India does, the world will notice because we have the capacity, we have the wherewithal to tilt the balance which side we position ourselves. And therefore, India positioning and posturing has a global impact. And rightly so, the press will catch on it and we'll play it out today. All right. Uh, in fact, uh, we're seeing more visuals now uh, coming in. Uh, in fact, some inside visuals as well now of uh, uh, the visit to that atom, uh, ex uh, atom center there, that atom exhibition. Of course, uh, uh, Putin and Modi currently inside uh, the center. You can, of course, see there Prime Minister Narendra Modi is getting a briefing uh, on, of course, the progress uh, in the energy sector that uh, has been made by Russia and also, of course, uh, the help that uh, Russia has provided to various uh, nations across the world, including India, in this strategic domain. Uh, let me quickly go back across to Professor Nalapath as well. Professor Nalapath on... Uh, okay, the bonhomie there, pretty vi visible uh, before I come to you, Professor Nalapath. We're seeing uh, Prime Minister Modi and uh, President Putin all smiles there. Uh, PM Modi also tapping, of course, uh, PM, uh, President Putin on his back as the two, of course, uh, see various advancements made by Russia. Very interesting exhibition there, as these visuals are clearly showing us. But coming back to you, Professor Nalapath, on the foreign press coverage, what do you make of it? Uh, and, you know, the way they've been reacting so far to this visit uh, by uh, Narendra Modi to Russia. Look, the foreign press that you're quoting has said from the beginning, Putin wants to take over the whole of Ukraine. They have said... Uh, I mean, from the beginning, that, you know, that it's important to fight Russia. Russia is the main <coughs> enemy. They are completely back in the era of Cold War 1.0 to the benefit of the real adversary, China. They are Chinese are delighted by this. The more the Ukraine war drags on, the better for China. Uh, it's not good for Russia, not good for India, not good for Ukraine. But may I uh, add... One significant point, uh, Uday, and that significant point is that first, the, the first Cold War, China and the United States acted together against the Soviet Union. China basically, I'm sorry to say, betrayed its fellow uh, communist uh, uh, partner and sided with the capitalist country against the communist partner because China has always wanted to be number one which basically means it wants to overtake the United States now. The West needed to concentrate its diplomacy on ensuring that Russia and the West stand together where China is concerned. Instead, it is basically by its old Cold War 1.0 mentality driven Russia uh, into the embrace of China. And this is really going to be bad news for, for the West itself. So they made a huge geopolitical error and the, the, with the result that the Chinese have not suffered, uh, had it been the case, that Russia 
and uh, and the EU, for example, would have worked closer together. Russia and the US would have worked closer together, as indeed Gorbachev wanted, Yeltsin wanted, and Putin wanted for many years until he finally realized that it's never going to happen during the Clinton. Never going to happen. So this is the point. And as far as India is concerned, look, now that China has become the adversary, whether Biden or uh, or anybody, Keir Starmer or Scholz or Macron realize it or not, their public is beginning to realize it. As a consequence, frankly, decoupling from China, including by Taiwan, is inevitable. Okay. In fact, very high-level Taiwanese delegations here. And from that point of view, this is the ideal opportunity for India to do what China did in the 1990s, attract a lot of investment from overseas. We can now attract a similar amount of overseas investment if we, you know, if our geopolitical alignment is correct. And from that point of view, the prime minister's alignment is correct. Okay. And what's now needed is a regulatory and other structure that's brought into alignment. So tens of millions of new jobs can be created in India and India can right. take off this as China took off in 1990. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.